Yashar, Jasher 61. And it came to pass at that time, Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, commanded all his people to make for him a strong palace in Mitzrayim. And he also commanded the sons of Yaakov to assist the Mitzrayim in the building. And the Mitzrayim made a beautiful and elegant palace for a royal habitation. And he dwelt therein. And he renewed his government and he reigned securely. And Zevalon, the son of Yaakov, died in that year. That is the 72nd year of the going down of Yashar'el to Mitzrayim. And Zevalon died a hundred and fourteen years old and was put into a coffin and given into the hands of his children. And in the 75th year died his brother, Shimon. He was 120 years old at his death, and he was also put into a coffin and given into the hands of his children. And Sipho the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, captain of the host to Angus, king of Dimhaba, was still daily enticing Angus to prepare for battle, to fight with the sons of Yaakov in Mitzrayim. And Angus was unwilling to do this thing, for his servants had related to him all the might of the sons of Yaakov, what they had done unto them in their battle with the children of Esau. And Sipho was in those days daily enticing Angus to fight with the sons of Yaakov in those days. And after some time, Angus hearkened to the words of Sipho, and consented to him to fight with the sons of Yaakov in Mitzrayim. And Angius got all his people in order, a people numerous as the sand which is upon the seashore, and he formed his resolution to go to Mitzrayim to battle. And amongst the servants of Angius was a young, rather youth, Fifteen years old, Bilam, the son of Beor, was his name, and the youth was very wise and understood the art of witchcraft. And Angius said unto Bilam, Conjure for us, I pray you, with the witchcraft, that we may know who will prevail in this battle to which we are now proceeding. And Balaam ordered that they should bring him wax. And he made thereof the likeness of chariots and horsemen, representing the army of Angus. And the army of Mitzrayim. And he put them in the cunningly prepared waters that he had for that purpose. And he took in his hand the bows of myrtle trees. And he exercised his cunning. And he joined them over the water. And there appeared unto him in the water the resembling images of the hosts of Angius, falling before the resembling images of the Mitzrim and the sons of Yaakov. And Balaam told this thing to Angius, and Angius despaired and did not arm himself to go down to Mitzrayim to battle, and he remained in his city. And when Sepho, the son of Eliphaz, 
saw that Angius despaired of going forth to battle with the Mitzrim, Thessa Fo fled from Angius from Africa. And he went and came unto Kittim. And all the people of Kittim received him with great honor. And they hired him to fight their battles all the days. And Sappho became exceedingly rich in those days. And the troops of the king of Africa still spread themselves in those days. And the children of Kittim assembled and went to Mount Kaptiza, rather Kaptizia, on account of the troops of Angius, king of Africa, who were advancing upon them. And it was one day that Sappho lost a young heifer, and he went to seek it, and he heard it lowing round about the mountain. And Sappho went, and he saw, and behold, there was a large cave at the bottom of the mountain, and there was a great stone there at the entrance of the cave. And Sappho split the stone, and he came into the cave, and he looked, and behold, a large animal was devouring the ox. From the middle upward it resembled a man, and from the middle downward it resembled an animal. And Sappho rose up against the animal and slew it with his swords. And the inhabitants of Kittim heard of this thing, and they rejoiced exceedingly, and they said, What shall we do unto this man who has slain this animal that devoured our cattle? And they all assembled to consecrate one day in the year to him. And they called the name thereof Sappho after his name. And they brought him, rather brought unto him drink offerings year after year on that day. And they brought unto him gifts. At that time, Jania, the daughter of Uzu, woman of King Angius became ill, and her illness was heavily felt by Angius and his officers. And Angius said unto his wise men, What shall I do to Jania, and how shall I heal her from her illness? And wise men said unto him, because the air of our country is not like the air of the land of Kittim, and our water is not like their water, therefore from this has the queen become ill. For through the change of air and water she became ill, and also because in her country she drank only the water which came from Purma, which her ancestors had brought up with bridges. And Angius commanded his servants, and they brought unto him in vessels of the waters of Purma, belonging to Kittim. And they weighed those waters with all the waters of the land of Africa. And they found those waters lighter than the waters of Africa. And Angius saw this thing, and he commanded all his officers to assemble the hewers of stone in thousands and tens of thousands. And they hewed stone without number. And the builders came and they built an exceedingly strong bridge. And they conveyed the spring of water from the land of Kittim unto Africa. And those waters were for Jania, the queen, and for all her concerns, to drink from and to bake, wash and bathe therewith, and also to water therewith all seed 
from which food can be obtained, and all fruit of the ground. And the king commanded that they should bring of the soil of Kittim in large ships, and they also brought stones to build therewith. And the builders built palaces for Jania the queen, and the queen became healed of her illness. And at the revolution of the year, the troops of Africa continued coming to the land of Kittim to plunder as usual, and Sephor, son of Eliphaz, heard their report, and he gave orders concerning them, and he fought with them, and they fled before him. And he delivered the land of Kittim for them. And the children of Kittim saw the valor of Sepho, and the children of Kittim resolved, and they made Sepho king over them. And he became king over them. And while he reigned, they went to subdue the children of Tubal and all the surrounding islands. And their king Sepho went at their head, and they made war with Tubal and the islands. And they subdued them. And when they returned from the battle, they renewed his government for them. And they built for him a very large palace for his royal habitation and seat. And they made a large throne for him. And Sepho reigned over the whole land of Kittim and over the land of Italia fifty years.